quiet start to the week for the FX market as Hurricane Sandy swept through the U.S. East Coast, shutting down the U.S. stock market for two whole days. Joining me now to discuss the week's events, both political and economical, is Geoffrey Yu, FX strategist at UBS in London. Geoffrey, welcome to the show. Now, without a doubt, Hurricane Sandy was the most talked about event this week. What kind of overall economic impact from Hurricane Sandy are we looking at here in terms of growth, inflation and reconstruction work in the U.S.? Uh, well, right now, I think uh, all the estimates of the economic costs um, are being revised upwards. Uh, I think the latest numbers are about $50 billion or so. Um, you know, bearing in mind that uh, Katrina, according to some congressional studies, uh, cost around 0.5% of GDP. Um, however, that's the immediate impact. Note that there will be reconstruction impacts as well, which is actually positive for GDP. So, you know, net-net, um, we don't think it's going to make too much of a difference, actually, this week. Um, we've just come out with our U.S. some growth forecasts, and we still think that will get closer to 2.5% in real terms next year. The latest U.S. jobs figures have just been released, showing 171,000 jobs added in October. Now, this is one of the last key pieces of economic data to come out of the U.S. before the presidential elections next Tuesday. What do you make of these figures, and do you think this will have much of an effect on the mind frame of voters? Um, probably you know, marginally for some of the swing, vo uh, the swing voters. Uh, I think it's important to note that uh, at the end of the day, both candidates are only targeting a very small percentage of the population who haven't made up their minds yet. Um, so probably uh, the uh, overall political situation since the hurricane and plus today's numbers, uh, they may have favoured the incumbent over the past few days or so. Uh, will that be enough um, to push him past um, uh, the finishing line, uh, perhaps? Uh, but at this stage, um, we're not uh, you know, trying to place too much stock in the uh, impact of one number. As we just mentioned, the US election has entered the final stages, and the latest polls suggest it's a close race. Jeffrey, what is the global impact of the US elections on the financial markets? I think the impact is you know, often overstated. I mean, beyond, uh, let's say, an intraday impact, um, uh, given a surprise result that uh, we might see something. But overall, you know, it depends less on who the president is. It depends on the president's policies, right? Uh, if we go through uh, the last few electoral cycles, uh, what has really mattered as a market um, at the end of the day have been what policies have been able to, to push through. For example, uh, you know, during the, the Clinton years, um, it was well into the second term before uh, U.S.'s um, budget situation really began to turn around, and uh, you could say you know, some uh, domestic conditions in terms of innovation actually prompted a revival within the U.S. And, you know, during uh, the uh, 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 Bush um, uh, junior years, uh, we had a similar situation, you know, especially with the 2000 uh, and four election when it was an exceed, uh, exceedingly close. I think it's similar to what we've uh, seen right now. That election in itself actually probably did not uh, impact markets that much. Um, but between 2004 2005, we did see the policy of Homeland Invest uh, the Homeland Investment Act being pushed through, and that made a material difference um, for the dollar. So um, uh, at the end of the day, it's um, you know it's not uh, completely um, uh, impossible uh, that Obama will push through. Uh, some you know very pro growth policies um, uh, and uh, pro dollar policies, and it's not inconceivable that you know Romney's I mean, calculations, especially on cutting the deficit, may actually be overdone and uh, may you know, tip the U.S. back into recession, or vice versa. You know we're not trying to take sides here. So you know at the end of the day, we'll only know after the fact uh, what happens. Uh, so again, you know beyond maybe a 24, 48 hour impact, we're not really looking for anything at this stage. Moving over to Europe, Greece remains in European focus at the moment, although Spain isn't far behind. Now the discussions continue on how to deal with Greece's debt, and a number of proposals are being considered. What are your views on debt buybacks, and will it really work in Greece's case? Um, our calculation is that debt buybacks in Greece will only bring down the deficit in gross terms um, by about 12% or so, uh, hence it's not going to make too much of a difference, especially considering who um, uh, holds actually the debt which will be eligible for buybacks, and we're actually still talking about you know, some of the outstanding private sector bonds which are trading at 30% you know, yields on right now. So, uh, you know, again, uh, that's just a short-term sticking plaster. that we still need to see uh, strong measures towards debt sustainability in Greece and right now that's just still elusive. Looking at the Eurozone as a whole, manufacturing figures released today showed the Eurozone manufacturing shrinking for the 15th month running in October as output and new orders fell. Are flagging prospects in the Eurozone's biggest economies enough to prompt the ECB to ease monetary policy and cut rates further in the next few months? Absolutely. Um, so if we see further gains in German unemployment numbers, for example, with um, deflationary trends actually setting through, uh, then uh, with a combination uh, of um, uh, the uh, current OMT policies, and for example, there is still scope for further declines in interest rates. At this stage, um, you know, if we uh, look at uh, you know, benchmark uh, rates, for example, we are not looking for any um, change in 
uh, the ECB's um, benchmark refinancing rate for all of next year or the year after. We just don't see rates going up anytime soon. So again, it depends on the macro situation. If it's sharp deterioration in core European unemployment, then of course action will be taken. Um, but it's probably a moving target right now. What about the Bank of Japan's moves this week to expand its asset purchase program by 11 trillion yen? Now, a lot of investors were disappointed by a monetary easing move that they feel was only marginally better than expected. Would you agree? Uh, well, actually, I think, um, you know, as far as a conventional APP is concerned for BOJ, it, it, it hardly matters to me, you know, how much in the BOJ do in terms of quantity. 10 trillion, 40 trillion, 50 trillion, if they're buying uh, JGBs at current levels, again, it's not going to matter. However, if they actually move 1 trillion, 2 trillion uh, yen, to actually buy foreign assets, for example, then it's going to be a total game changer. So I think the market really should you know, move away from just looking at absolute numbers of BOJ and start thinking more about what they're actually doing. Any substantive changes are right now, that's not the case. Finally, Jeffrey, looking ahead to next week, how would you recommend trading ahead of the U.S. elections and key rate decisions taking place later on in the week? Um, still favoring uh, trading uh, volatility at the some stage. Um, probably directionally, it's going to be uh, you know, kind of uh, choppy. I think we may start to get some of the uh, large moves um, in, in spot in one direction or other, giving a lot of people think the uh, upcoming events are quite binary. If that's the case, then there's definitely value in um, going long gamma from current levels. Thank you very much, Jeffrey, for talking us through some of the biggest financial events to take place this week. Now, to wrap things up, I'm going to leave you with some of the best quotes this week during interviews with financial experts on Duca's Copy TV. So until Monday, viewers, goodbye.